kidney function test refers to a group of tests that are done to evaluate the overall functioning of the kidneys. The kidney has various functions such as filtration, excretion, and secretory function. Derangement in any of these functions such either decreased excretion of waste products and hence their accumulation in the body and loss of some vital nutrients from the body. Let's look at the basic physiology of the kidney. The functional unit of the kidney is part of the nephron and it consists of two main parts, that's the glomerular part and the tubular system. The glomerulus is composed of a Bowman's capsule and a tuft of liquid blood vessels encapsulated by a Bowman's capsule. The primary purpose of the glomerulus is filtration. The liquid blood vessels filter into the glomerulus almost all the water, electrolytes and small proteins, nutrients such as sugar and the excretory products such as urea. The filtration is dependent on the size and charge of the particles. And also the basement membrane has a negative charge hence preventing negatively charged particles from passing through. The tubular system is responsible for reabsorption of most of the water, electrolytes, nutrients, as well as the excretion of the remaining nutrients by means of secretion into the tubule. These tubules are responsible for the concentration of urine. The components of kidney function test can be broadly divided into two. That is the test that measure glomerular function or test that measure the tubular function. The tests that are part of the kidney functions test panel include the urine examination, serum urea, serum creatinine levels, blood urea nitrogen known as BUN, calcium levels, phosphorus levels, proteins, albumin, creatinine clearance rate, urea clearance rates, insulin clearance rate, and Dilution and concentration of urine so to get it electrolyte. Let's start with urine examination. Urine examination provides excellent clues to the nature and location of the lesion in the renal system. This examination consists of a physical examination whereby the color, odor, quantity, and specific gravity of the urine is noted. Microscopic examination of urine is done to rule out any parcels, red blood cell casts, and crystals. Serum urea. Urea is an end product of protein catabolism that is produced from the amino group of the amino acids and is produced by the liver by means of the urea cycle. Urea undergoes filtration at the glomerulus as well as secretion and reabsorption at the tubular level. The rise in the level of serum urea is generally seen as a mark of renal dysfunction, especially glomerular dysfunction. Urea level only rises when the glomerular filtration is reduced below 50%. And the normal serum urea level is between 20 to 45 mg per deciliter. But the levels also may be affected by the diet as well as non-kidney non related disorders. Serum urea level is increasing in hypermetabolic conditions and starvation, and decreased in case of hepatic injury. Blood urea is not an excellent mark of renal dysfunction, as it rises quite late in the dysfunction and its rise is not exclusive of kidney function. Urea is therefore measured in a dark diagnostic lab aided by UV kinetic method using alpha ketoglutarate, ammonium except in presence of enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase, blood urea nitrogen or BUN. Sometimes the serum urea level is expressed as a blood urea nitrogen. The serum levels can be easily converted to BUN by multiplying it by 0.47. The normal levels are between 5 and 26 mg per deciliter. They are decreased in fluid overload, malnutrition, severe liver disease and syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone production, and increased in intrinsic renal dysfunction such as the pre-renal azotemia, due to congestive cardiac failure, shock, vomiting, and diarrhea, and in post-renal azotemia due to bilateral ureter obstruction, bladder outward obstruction, and bladder dysfunction. Azotemia is therefore referred to as a rise in blood nitrogen levels. 
blood urea nitrogen to create new ratio. The normal ratio lies between 10 and it is increased in heart failure, blood loss, dehydration, salt depression and gastrointestinal bleeding and decreased in severe liver disease, syndrome of inappropriate and direct hormone pregnancy and rhabdomyolysis. Phosphorus levels. The kidneys help control the amount of phosphate in the blood and extra phosphate is filtered by the kidneys and passes out of the body in the urine. High levels of phosphorus in blood only occur in people with severe kidney disease or severe dysfunction of the calcium regulation and excessively high levels of phosphorus in the blood, although are rare, can combine with calcium to form deposits in soft tissues such as muscle. And protein levels. Protein in urine is noticeably increased in renal disease of any etiology except obstruction, and is therefore very sensitive general screenings for renal disease, although it's not a specific test. The extent of protein urea provides useful information in your diagnosis and management. The greatest degree of protein urea is found in nephrotic syndrome that is more than 3 to 4 grams per day. And in renal disease, with nephritic syndrome, the urinary protein excretion rate is usually about 1 to 2 grams per day. In tubular interstitial disease, urine protein is generally less than 1 gram per day. And only in nephrotic syndrome is the urine protein low sufficient to exist to result in hypoproteinemia. Serum creatinine levels. Creatine is a small tripeptide found in the muscle and it stays in its phosphorylated form and releases energy in any burst of muscle activity and is released into the muscles during a wear and a tear and is then converted to creatinine. It is to be remembered that, unlike urea, creatinine is not a toxic waste, but it is simply used as a marker of renal function. Creatinine is freely filtered by the glomerulus and is also a very extensive secreted into the tubules. So any problem with glomerular filtration has a significant effect on the excretion of creatinine, resulting in a much substantial rise in the serum creatinine levels. Creatinine levels are lower in pregnant women, and a value of more than 0.8 mg per deciliter is an abnormal value to need intervention. Serum creatinine is decreased in mass reduction and elevated by drugs such as trimetoprim, simetidine, and in hypothyroidism. It is also decreased in hyperthyroidism cases. The normal serum creatinine level is between 0.6 to 1.5 mg per deciliter. And serum creatinine is a better indicator of renal function and a more specifically glomerular function than urea. For a particular individual, the creatinine levels are dependent on muscle mass and muscle wear and tear. Creatinine is then measured by Jervis method. Creatinine clearance rate. Creatinine is filtered at the glomerulus and its reabsorption at the tubular level is insignificant. Because of this, creatinine clearance can be used to measure glomerular filtration rate. It is measured over a period of 24 hours. For this, urine is collected over 24-hour period and a blood sample is also collected. The concentration of creatinine is then measured both in urine as well as the serum sample. The normal range is 100 to 120 milliliters per minute in male and 95 to 105 milliliters in female. The glomerular filtration rate is defined as the ability of the kidneys to fill the blood. And the normal one is between 125 milliliters per minute per 1.73 meter squared in male and 100 milliliters per minute. Urea clearance is the hypothetical amount of blood from which kidney clears urea in one minute. This is measured by measuring the concentration of urea in blood, concentration of urea in urine, and amount of urine excreted over one hour interval. Urea clearance is less than its glomerular filtration as some of the urea that is filtered at the glomerulus is reabsorbed at the tubules. To measure urea clearance, first the patient is made to void urine and then made to drink two glasses of water. Then the urine is collected after an hour and the blood specimen is also collected at the same time. Then the patient 
urine sample is collected after another hour. The level of urine, the tooth urine samples and the blood sample is then measured again. Maximum urea clearance of an average individual or a body surface of 1.73 square meters is 75 milliliters per minute and a standard urea clearance is 54 milliliters per minute. A urea clearance below 60% of standard is considered impaired. Inulin clearance. Inulin is a small polysaccharide of low molecular weight made up of fructose. And to mention the mineral filtration rate, substances used should have the following quality. It should be non-toxic, should not be metabolized in the body, should be completely filtered at the glomerulus, and should neither be secreted or reabsorbed in the tubules. Inulin meets all these criteria and hence makes it a suitable candidate to measure the glomerular filtration rate. And to measure inulin clearance, inulin is introduced in the body by means of a slow continuous infusion to maintain a steady concentration of inulin in the blood. This is done by first infusing 30 ml of 10% inulin in a 250 ml of normal saline that are infused at a rate of 20 ml per minute to achieve desired concentration. Then 70 ml of 10% inulin are diluted in 500 ml of normal saline and infused at the rate of 4 ml per minute to maintain the desired concentration. The patient is asked to maturate 20 minutes after the second infusion and the urine is discarded at the time noted. After exactly 60 minutes, take another sample of urine and the blood is collected. Measure the volume of urine and concentration of inulin in both serum and urine. The normal inulin clearance state is 120 to 130 ml in a minute for an average person with a body surface yield of 1.73 square meters. And this is a close approximation of the glomerular filtration rate. A below normal inulin clearance shows an impaired glomerular function. Concentration test. In case of water shortage in the body, the kidney is able to concentrate urine and conserve the water. This is done by increasing reabsorption of water from the glomerular filtrate and the tubular level. The measurement of the ability of the kidney to conserve water and concentrate urine is a measure of tubular function. And for this test, the patient is not allowed to take any food or water after evening meal. The first three urine samples passed in the morning are collected and their specific gravity measured. In a normal person, the specific gravity of at least one of the samples should be above 1.025 or above. If the specific gravity remains below 1.025, then it is a sign of tubular dysfunction. The dilution test. Like the concentration test, the dilution test is also a measure of functioning of the tubules. In a case of fluid overload of our body, the tubules reabsorb less amounts of water, resulting in excretion of diluted urine. For this test, the subjects put an overnight fast, and then in the morning, a subject is made to drink 1,200 ml of water and over a time period of 30 minutes. Then the urine samples are collected every half of 4 hours. The specific gravity of the samples is measured and at least one of the samples should have a specific gravity of 1.003 or less. If none of the samples have the specific gravity of 1.003 or less, this is a sign of a tubular dysfunction. Another test is the electrolyte levels. The purpose of the kidney is not just water balance and excretion but also to maintain the electrolyte balance of our body. Kidney actively reabsorbs or excretes electrolytes. Whenever they are measured in blood, they can give a clue if the kidney is functioning normally. Calcium levels. This test measures the amount of calcium in your blood and not calcium in your bones. The body needs it to build and fix bones and teeth, help nerves work and make muscle contraction, help blood clots and help the heart work normally. The calcium test screens for problem with parathyroid glands or kidneys and certain types of cancers and bone problems, pancreatitis and kidney stones. And normally the results ranges from 8.5 to 10.2 mg per deciliter.